This is my 2001 X-Type. It's a 2.5 V6 petrol manual four-wheel drive and today I'm going to change the rear springs. So I'm going to have to jack the car up in the middle and on the spring plate so that later I can lower the spring plate to get the spring out. So in the middle there, that's where the two pivot points are on that subframe. And I'm also going to have to undo the anti-roll bar to allow it to drop. Now if you've never taken the anti-roll bar off, you will almost certainly have to destroy the drop links. Um, in which case you better make sure you've got some spare ones. These are the replacement springs that I've got. They are off a 2002 2.5 X-Type. They are in extremely good condition. There's a tiny bit of surface rust. You compare them to the one that's on the car. I don't think these have had much use, so they might actually be replacements. I paid the princely sum of £25 delivered. The best price I could find, for even for pattern parts, was just under £100 a pair. Um, and that's from Euro Parts. I certainly would not buy um, new springs from eBay. They're always fakes. So that's one I've just painted with Smooth Right, which is a Hammerite product against the original one. And what I've found is it's best to actually turn it over and paint it the other way up. Um, the other thing I've noticed, which I've never seen before, is just there. There's a little hologram that says warranty void if removed. So it makes me think that these aren't original kit. These are actually replacements. So using the three jacks, I've brought the back of the car up reasonably high. One under the spring plate, one under the chassis in the middle, and one under the other spring plate, because you've got to remember that we've got to drop these spring plates down quite a way to actually get the spring to drop out. So now I can just pop the wheels off and look at disconnecting the nuts and bolts. So there's the exposed spring. And the first thing I've done is count the number of coils on it and make sure that it corresponds with the number of the new springs, which is seven. And what we have to do is undo this bolt here, which you can see is rusty as hell, uh, and take this bolt out and then this whole assembly can drop. This part, which is obviously extremely heavy, I'm going to put a block of wood under there, but that shouldn't drop because that's being held in place by the shock absorber. Um, which will obviously distend, but we need to put some in. We need to put some in here to stop this dropping and injuring me. Well, I've had a bit of luck here. I thought this was a captive nut. It's actually um, a nylock nut, and as I was heating it up with my caramelizer, the plastic started to bubble out of it. So I can actually just use the torque wrench to undo it. Now the other end is jammed with my bar. That is actually what I'm doing. A bit stiff, as you'd expect, because I've just melted the nylock. It's coming off. I'm just going to tap this through gently. Not much movement there. So I banged it through that far. I just need a drift to get it to pass all the way out now. I'll go and find something in the workshop. So when you've got it most of the way out and it doesn't want to drive out because it's on the thread, you can just use the socket to carefully take the rest of it out. Remembering it's all being held in place by the jack. So that finally pinged out. And now we need to pull this section forward so that this section can drop down. So hopefully if I just slowly let that down, this will kind of move. Right, that has come out that far, and it can't really move much more. But I think now, if I drop the spring plate, it should actually clear this and just drop down, and we'll be able to get the spring off. In order for the spring plate to drop, you have to take off the connection to the anti-roll bar. Now the drop links here, if they're new on your car, they'll be reasonably easy to get off. If they're not, they're complete bastards to get off, and you'll destroy them. So the easiest thing to do is actually to disconnect the anti-roll bar here. So there's a joint there 
and there's a joint there. Once they're disconnected, they're not connected to the car, so the thing will just drop anyway. So, bolt there, bolt there, drop this down. That's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to gently let this spring plate down, and um, hopefully it should all work. Well, those are not as gently as I would have liked. So by jiggling this about, moving the trolley jack further under it to the other side so it tilts it over, I was able to then release this joint, pull this out by holding the disc, I need to pull it that far, and then that will drop down. So hopefully the spring will come off now. If you push it down at the bottom, it unsticks at the top so you can see how it's set in. There's some kind of plastic insert there we'll have to be careful of. And then down at the other end, that just seats in there. I think I need to twist it out. I'll put my gloves on for that job. That has to drop really quite a long way. So it's now touching the ground. I'm gonna to have to jack the middle of the car up a little bit higher, but it's nearly off. You can see it's just got to drop off over this and then twist out. So let's jack the car up a bit more. I've got it right down to the bottom so the top's free. Just got to figure out how to get the bottom out. I imagined it just twisted out. So it was being held in by corrosion. Um, so I used my big hammer and tapped it judiciously and it popped out. So that's all good. Um, it's got a rubber seal on the end here which one of the new ones didn't come with, so I can just re reuse this. This is actually not broken, so I need to remember to put that back on. The top of the spring has this plastic retainer, and it's just worth noting how it goes on before you take it off. It's like there's a little bit of glue in there, actually. Um, but there's a step in it where it meets the top of the spring, so make sure I put it on the right way when it goes on to the new one. Before I put it back together, I've just covered the whole thing with a coating of underbody seal, wax oil, just to help it along a bit. Put the plastic ring back in the right place. Put the spring over the rubber damper stop first, and then drop that into the bottom. You'll see there's a hole in there, and that corresponds with the end of the spring. So now, hopefully, I should just be able to use the jack to push it back up into position. I've just used my tyre wrench to get it up so that it's all seated in the right place and then I can put the jack underneath and uh, do it up. Getting these two to meet up again is quite difficult and what you have to do, because the jack's on wheels, you have to keep moving it around and jiggling it about and then when it gets close you have to use a big hammer to make sure that it goes in the right place. It's a lot of fiddling about. It's certainly not like they show it on the auto dock videos. I finally got it in position by getting the holes close together and then I just put my little drift in there and dragged it into the right place and that actually does sit like it's going to go back together. Hopefully the bolt will just go straight in. The bolt I'm going to grease up with some really good quality molly grease before that goes in. Well the bolt went straight in with just a small judicious tap. I think I was extraordinarily lucky there. But I guess over the years, you know, this is a 2001 car, it kind of finds its whole own place and just drops back into that place. So, by doing everything up, that's this side done. That wasn't as bad as I thought it was going to be. Now the reason I changed the springs is because I've got problems with the tyres scrubbing off on the inside. And originally it was only on one side, now it's both sides. And you can see that I'm losing this tyre, it's not yet illegal but it's pretty close. Wouldn't go for an MOT I shouldn't think. Um, and I couldn't figure out why this was, because I'd readjusted everything, I'd checked everything, everything was straight, everything was good, I'd even done a video on how you can't change the camber. Now I know why this has happened. There's my problem. The spring has broken off, and judging by that corrosion, quite a time ago. Um, in fact, I'm quite happy about that because it means when I put my new springs on, everything should be true and everything should be good again. Um, 
I did go through a massive pothole, perhaps that's what broke it. The other side's all back together except for this bottom bolt and I cannot get it to go through and I've realised that the bolt on the other side had been ground to a point so it's easy to drive it in whereas this one's got a flat head so I'm just going to grind a point on this to make it so I can drive it through there. So I've ground that to a nice point hopefully that'll make it easier to drive it in through. I've also checked it with a nut so that it still threads because it'd be really disastrous if you drove it all the way through and then found you couldn't do the nut up. So with a combination of putting a point on the bolt and moving each little part every now and then using my little bottle jack I've managed to get it through. The other side went straight in, this side was a complete bastard. Um, I don't know if that's because this side had the broken spring and it's all settled in the wrong place um, but you need to watch out for that. I now need to put the anti-roll bar back on. In order to do that you have to make sure that both the spring plates are level. The anti-roll bar is back on. Everything's looking lovely and shiny and it's all seated nicely. All I need to do is put the wheels back on and give it a run around the block to make sure it's all bedded in. It isn't going to make any horrendous noises. I've bounce tested the back of the car by bouncing up and down with my full weight. Now I'm just going to take it for a quick hack around the lanes to make sure it's all nicely seated. So I'm sitting in third. This is a rough old road. I'm just going to give it some willy. Just touching 50. Oh, this car coming the other way. Slow down for him. Put it through a great big hole just to test the suspension. That obviously works. 